we're rolling. Now you may have noticed that uh, I don't have my usual background. That's because I'm not in my usual studio. In fact, I'm not even on my usual island. I had to travel a bit because a young friend of mine just had a birthday, as you can see right there. So uh, it was important to be there, and I had to pack up my stuff for work and keep moving. Which means that I was doing video conferencing without my fancy camera. So let's talk a little bit about how to make do with a bad camera. Not a bad camera, a, a cheap camera. No. How to make do with the camera that is available. So we're going to take a look at how to use a free bit of software called OBS, Open Broadcast System, Open Broadcast Studio, Open Broadcast something. And we're using it to get some controls over our webcam that we might not otherwise have. But it can do a lot more than that. Hey, how did I get here? Wasn't I, wasn't I just downstairs? <laughs> well, welcome, my friends, to OBS. Yes, that was a pre-recorded video. Of course, this whole thing is a pre-recorded video, but hey. So we're looking at this bit of software called OBS. I know that's really confusing because you can see this whole cascading line of things, but the most important thing we're looking at is the sources, no, scenes, hold up. <clears throat> scenes, <laughs> yeah, scenes on, the, on, on one side, sources on the other. Once you install this software, it gives you what it amounts to basically television broadcast studio software. You can do tons of crazy stuff with this, and people do. But we're just going to use it as a control system for your webcam. You can actually take this image that we're getting in OBS and take it to Zoom or any other web conferencing, web conferencing software. Of course, it also lets you do fun things like this which could be useful if you're a teacher because you really want to have exciting documents. This is an exciting document. But let's focus on the camera first. <laughs> All right, so here in the scene desktop one, we're looking at the desktop that has OBS running on it. And you can see over here, we have two sources. We have the webcam and the surface desk. Now the webcam is a video capture device right there. And the surface desk I have is a display capture. So it's capturing the whole display. And those are the two main things we're gonna look at right now. For example, the other desktop, the second monitor I have set up, this is an an another display capture. And you can see I have my little window up here. Hi, I'm up here, rather than being down here. So depending on how you have your scene set up, you can move things around. You know, it's, it's as easy as dragging and dropping. Sorry, that might have been a little hard to look at. But now, what if your camera doesn't look as good as mine? Well, I have a secret. Even my camera doesn't look as good as mine. <laughs> so I'm going to double click on webcam here in the sources list and up comes this control ui and right here second button down it says configure video so we're going to go to configure configure video here i have zoom and exposure that i can change and i am going to make sure that auto exposure is unchecked i'm going to move this around a little bit you see it's still adjusting itself a little bit Let's leave it there and go to the video proc amp side. Ah, white balance is auto checked. We're going to uncheck that and then move this around a bit until it looks about like I want it. Hey, yeah, looks pretty good. And now, see all of these autos are off. You can adjust brightness. Wow. Contrast, that kind of thing. If you want to make it a little flatter, you can, or you want to make it kind of look like a bad you know, spaghetti western shot in hot sunlight, you can do that too. Uh, but these are the controls that OBS will give you on almost any web camera that your web camera might not have all on, on its own. Now, if your web camera does have software, you're home free. But OBS, as I said, can do a lot more. Now, for example, I might have something in the background that I just am too lazy to clean up. So I'd rather maybe zoom in a little instead of take the time to put those things away. And that's easy to do in OBS with these controls. One other thing to note about these video controls 
Um, they don't always work 100%. Uh, they work differently across different cameras. And the controls that you have available on your camera may be different than the ones available on mine. The other thing is that these, uh, with the newest version of OBS, it seems to me like these settings stay. But um, double check on your own system because sometimes uh, they reset themselves every time you restart OBS. Uh, I haven't seen that for a little while, but just something to be aware of, so keep, keep an eye out for it. Now there's other controls as well. And if you, instead of double click on webcam and instead right click, I'm gonna take a look at the filters. So as you can see, there's stuff in these lists. We'll look at the effects filters down here. These are the video filters down there, and those are the audio filters up there. So you see, you can see here, I have something cunningly labeled color correction, and guess what it does? It corrects the color. So um, there's the camera without the color correction. Not really bad, nothing wrong with that image, but you can make it look a little bit nicer by adjusting these various things. You can see here I've taken the gamma down just a tad. I've increased the contrast just a tad, the brightness just a tad, and I've increased the saturation just a tiny little bit. And that's it. A little bit with this color correction goes a long way. But you can also do some fun stuff with it. Like let's pretend I'm a teacher and I'm gonna make another color correcting thing called old teaser. And instead of making it look better, I'm going to take the saturation here, turn it all the way down, I'm going to turn the contrast all the way, not all the way up, but up a bit and mess around with the gamma until it looks about the way I want it. There we go. That looks like a terrible black and white image, doesn't it? So I'm here teaching. And you know what? You know what you kids, well, you kids don't appreciate the back in my day, when I was your age, I had to walk uphill to school 20 miles both ways. And then you can turn it off and go back to normal. You wouldn't do that often, but it's the kind of thing that you can do with this software pretty easily. And uh, it just adds some interest to your presentation. Let's look at the scene here again. So I have desktop one and I have a webcam, a webcam that I can move around. I can also resize it. And if I hold Alt, you can see here I've already taking it from widescreen, because you don't need all this stuff here when you're in this smaller view. In fact, I could even make it larger and then crop it in. Of course, now I have to be careful about moving around, but let's say, for example, that just focuses more in on my face and less on the background. Again, if you're a teacher or something, this is a useful feature. Here I have my little inset set off to the side so that I'm not covering the stuff that we're looking at. Like this could be a PowerPoint presentation over here rather than an exciting document. You can set up multiple views of the same desktop if you want to, and you just switch between them down here. But what about audio, I hear you saying? <clears throat> well, you may have seen another video I did about the audio filters in OBS. And if you haven't, it should be up here or up here, up there. Ha, huh, that was that. And you can take a look at what filters I'm using and why. But since I'm traveling, I'm using this wireless headset as my microphone rather than the big fancy mic that I normally use in the studio. But I can still use the same effects to get it to sound at least a little bit better. In the settings, in audio, I have set the mic here to my headset mic. So you're seeing the level of it right here. If I left, you know, right click on that and go to filters, you can see the audio filters that I have on this headset microphone. I have a noise suppressor right there. And I have an equalizer that is giving me uh, some low end bump to make this sound a little bit more like a broadcast microphone and cutting out some low end stuff. I just do that out of habit in case there's wind. I have a little compressor using the built-in one this time since the headset mic is usually already really compressed. But I just got a gentle three to one compression just in case I get really loud and it you know, it just sort of evens things out a little bit. And then a limiter in case I just blow it off the charts and that way it won't clip at the top and sound goofy. The takeaway from that is I am using studio effects on this video and on this audio coming into OBS. And I can take that from there to Zoom. Here you can see in Zoom that if I try and use the same camera that I'm using in OBS, it can't do it because OBS has grabbed the camera and won't let you do anything with it in any other application. But we're gonna go down to OBS a virtual camera, right there, head back to OBS proper. And you see right here down below my face is start virtual camera. 
we'll go ahead and start that and then head back to Zoom. You can now see <laughs> we have the uh, thing going on again. But whatever is going out on uh, OBS is going out via your, uh, your Zoom in this case. Uh, your desktop would go out on Zoom. Your other desktop would go out on Zoom, including Zoom if it's on that desktop. So you would want to, you know, take this and sort of go with that. Yeah, no, nothing's going on. What are you talking about? It's hiding back there. But that's how you get the camera to Zoom. Now, how do you get the audio to Zoom? Well, you could just take the microphone and go straight to Zoom. You'd lose the processing that way. You wouldn't even set it up in OBS. But if you want to take the processing out from OBS to Zoom, you would do it this way. First of all, your mic and aux, if you go into advanced audio properties, you would have to take mic aux here and change this monitor off to monitor and output. And that will set your mic to both go out to your stream, which we can't capture that directly, and go to whatever you set as a monitor output. Now we're going to go back into settings. So now our audio settings and scroll down a little bit here. You see monitoring device. And I'm going to set this to now, I, I have some interesting stuff here. Let me, let's, let, meet me at camera one. I have installed something that's a little strange. It's called a BB cable. It's a virtual cable. And it lets us virtually go from here to there inside the computer, just like you're running a, a guitar cable or a line cable from a mixer to a speaker or something like that. So I'm going to set it, let's say, to cable A. All, that's all I have to remember is cable A. So now my mic is being monitored on cable A. And in our audio settings, we are going to change the mic from the headset here to cable A. And now I have my mic coming through with the filters into Zoom. Pretty fancy, huh? Now I know that's complex, it's a little complex. And it's not something you would necessarily do unless you have lower quality equipment that you're trying to make sound as good as possible for professional reasons or just because you happen to be vain. That wouldn't be me. No, not at all. But the option is there. It's free. And uh, I think it's a good step towards taking much more control over your video present since your video present seems like it's going to be a thing more than it was, say, nine months ago for obvious reasons. Anyway, I hope that was a helpful little look at a potentially complex topic. Um, Got to start small. Baby steps. Baby steps. All right. Thanks for watching. If you have a mind, give me a like and a subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Take care.